Well, good morning, my friends. This is Linda, and it's Friday morning. Um, oh, this lighting is kind of weird today. Huh, I wonder what's going on here. Let me shut these blinds over here. There's my Christmas tree. Um, <laughs> hard to get the... That might be a little better. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Well, good morning. Um, we are here today to do our devotions for individuals and families. And as always, we start on page 137 in our Book of Common Prayer. If you don't have your Book of Common Prayer, that's fine. You can just follow along. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew. And um, we are continuing on with um, John the Baptist. This is the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verses 2 through 15. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who, has, who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women... There has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who is to come, whoever has ears. Let them hear the gospel of the Lord. So here we are in Advent. We're preparing for and anticipating the birth of the Christ child. Many of us even have our Advent wreaths set up and our little, little vignettes of candles and greenery and lighting them on every Sunday. So here... In, during Advent, we hear the stories of the Annunciation when the angel visits Mary and tells her she will bear a son. We also hear the story of Mary's cousin, Elizabeth, a woman, we are told, is 90 years old and is barren. Her husband, Zechariah, is a priest, and he is visited by the angel Gabriel, telling him that his wife, Elizabeth, will conceive and give birth to a son. He can't believe what he is hearing, and he is struck mute by the angel until after the child is born. 
Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth for three months after she learns she is pregnant. They have a joyful reunion. John the Baptist in utero jumps for joy. The Magnificat is born. And yes, we will hear the Magnificat on Sunday. Elizabeth is 90. Mary, around 16 or so. Both unexpectedly pregnant under mysterious circumstances. Wouldn't you love to hear what their conversations would have been? That girl talk. We know Zachariah has been struck mute, so he wouldn't be part of the conversation. In our Sunday readings, we hear about these two boys while in utero and infancy. In our daily lectionary readings this week, we are hearing from the three accounts of John the Baptist emerging from the wilderness to pave the way for the Lord. And we've had the accounts in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. What we never hear about is the relationship between these two boys growing up or the relationships between their mothers. And this leads me to another, I wonder, did John and Jesus know each other as children? When Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem, they would be passing very close by where John lived with his parents. And then how long did Elizabeth and Zechariah live after John was born? All I wonders. Then we go on to the accounts of John as he began his ministry. We are told in all of the Gospels that he wore animal skins for clothing and he ate locusts or grasshoppers and ate wild honey. Why or how did he become so extreme? His father was a priest. We can assume he lived in that world as a child. His appearance now sets him apart from the rest of the citizenry. As a messenger, he stands out and is easily recognizable. He doesn't blend in with the crowds wearing the fashion of the day. He also captures the attention of the Pharisees and the elders. No matter that his father was once one of them, John has been noticed by the authorities. The populace was living in a fractious time, what with the Roman occupation of Israel-Palestine Will his followers start a revolt? Will there be an uprising? This morning's readings tell us that John is in prison. He has heard about Jesus' activities and sends his people to question Jesus about what he is doing. Are you the Messiah? Or should we expect someone else? John is also assuming the Messiah will come and overthrow the Roman occupation as a political military force. Jesus then tells the followers that up until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence and violent people have been raiding it. And I have a little note in my Bible that I'd like to close with. This is called the one to come. John's question here may reflect confusion over the Messiah's role. If, like many Jews, John was expecting a political messiah who would overthrow the Romans, his imprisonment may have caused him to wonder why Jesus wasn't taking action. Jesus responded by clarifying the kind of kingdom he had come to establish, a kingdom that would bring healing, liberation, and good news, but not necessarily political power. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And this morning, I have not received the prayers of the people, and I don't have a current bulletin, so we'll... Pray for those who are on our hearts this morning. Well, here we go. And I think I'll use form. Where is it? 
Let's use form six this morning for our prayers of the people, and that's found on page 392. And I'll read the, um, the both parts. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for our presiding Bishop Michael, and our Bishop Megan, and all bishops and other ministers, including Reverend Sally, and Reverend Linda, for all who serve God in his church. And here, add your own intercessions for your own special needs and those friends and family who are on your heart today. My friend Mary. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Please feel free to add your own thanksgivings. I thank God for Matthew. We exalt you, O Lord, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Amen. And now let us say the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we've had a note from our Prayers of the People editor. And, oh, we had Rosie Otsby in our prayers, and Ellen lets us know that she's doing better now. So that's good. Thanks be to God. And all those who are on our prayer list, please keep them on your hearts today and pray for their healing and well-being. And now, let's listen to the colic that's going to send us on our way for this beautiful day. Chilly, but beautiful day. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, Direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, my friends, thanks for joining me. You go have a great day. I know I have some Christmas wrapping and shipping to do today, so that's on my list. And then I'm going to enjoy next week when my son comes home. Um, so you all take care. Um, next Friday is Christmas Day, so uh, stay tuned. Um, I'll get with Mother Sally, and we'll see what she determines about Christmas. Um, maybe she'll do it herself. I don't know. So anyway, my friends, thanks for joining me, and you all be well, be safe, be healthy, and let's pray that those vaccines just start rolling on out, just rolling on out. Okay, thanks so much. So long. <laughs>